Hi guys, this is Tim of Aristides. I'm the head assembly. I'm the one in charge of getting your guitars at optimal playability and get them out to you guys. So today we're gonna do a small run through on the HO series guitars to get a nice and proper setup on your guitars. So we're gonna walk through the basic steps so you always can get back to a basic setup as we do as the factory, so the factory default. And if you know how to do that, you can tune every guitar to your specs and get your action as low or as high as you want and get a proper setup every time and I think the ultimate playing experience. Normally when you're gonna start setting up a guitar, first tuning, then we set neck relief, then recheck tuning because depending on how much the relief is off, it needs a, maybe a little bit of retuning. If the neck is set correctly on the correct relief, then we're gonna check saddle height from the high E and the low E. Then we set the correct height on those two strings. Then we're gonna set the radius and then intonation and then you're good to go. So for all the guitars we have, we're gonna do one and six. So that also accounts for seven, eight, nine strings. And when we have set the height on the first and on the sixth string, then we use a radius gauge that's an unstring radius, so it gives the most precise radius on the strings. And because the one and six are on the correct height, all the other strings will be in place if you do a proper understring radius. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is tune the guitar. What helps also on a headless and ever tuned guitars is just after putting strings on, especially the wounded strings, just give them a little stretch all over the string. Because especially wounded strings can be a little bit loose around the core, giving some extra unwanted movements. So that's definitely something you want out when you start recording or playing a gig. So we're just gonna gently pull the strings and then tune it again. So, the guitar is tuned. Now I want to check the neck relief. So at the factory, we're going to use uh, a relief gauge. It's provided by Stu Mac. We tweaked it a little bit, so we are pretty sure it's to our standards and straight. And then we're going to set the neck relief with it. So usually we always use like minus three and a half. I think a thousandth of an inch. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty small. Um, so. As we can see, it's now minus seven and a half. When using the neck relief gauge, uh, you put it on the frets and you wanna put as minimum effort into the relief gauge so you get the most precise measurement from the neck. That means that you kind of position it on the frets and then let it rest on your fingers so you don't push down the neck towards your body. So it gives you the perfect measurement. That is proper. So this guitar is still in process. So the nut isn't perfectly made to the correct height. So the only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna press the strings to the height it should be when it's filed in. I do that so I can assure the right height on the top 12th fret, bottom, first string and sixth string. So that's what we're gonna do now. A good thing to know is not everybody has the, re the relief gauge but mostly your guitar will come in with a nice neck relief uh, on the transportation, so it should be good. But if you wanna know what the basis position of the neck relief is, you can always measure it just with a ruler. We use 46th of an inch, so that comes down for the high string normally on 3 46th of an inch and on the low E or whatever tuning it is for 46th of an inch. You can always check if you're maybe you're on tour, you don't have all the tools with you. You just can check, oh, the neck relief should be that measurement from the 12, top 12 fret bottom string. And then you can always tweak that a little bit if you're on the road and you just need like a small guidance to get your guitar in perfect playing position for the gig. All right, so what we're gonna do on the headless, we have these small locking screws on the front that will prevent the saddle from moving up or down. 
So first we're gonna loosen those screws so we can move the saddle and get the proper height on the high E and the low E. But because I know I need to radius it as well, I'm gonna unscrew all the screws to set up the correct height on the saddles. And I'll already prepare it for doing the radius later. For doing the unlocking of the saddles and setting them to height, we use the 1.5 millimeter tool that's supplied with your Aristides. At the shop, you're gonna use this 1.5 with a handle. To be honest, it's gonna make your life a lot easier, so. Go to a hardware store and get you some proper tools. So we got all the screws unlocked, and now we're gonna set the height on the first and on the sixth string. Once again, I'm gonna measure in 46 first. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the ruler as flat as possible on the fret. And then we're gonna check how much it says. So this is already around the 364. So now I'm gonna push in the first fret a little bit because this nut isn't filed yet. So when I push it down, it's in the right position. So I'm gonna leave this. So top of fret, bottom of the string. Then I'm gonna check string number six. It's also on the right position with me. If it's not the case, you can loosen the string tension a little bit so you have room to get your tool in. So I can do this with this to get the tool in and you can just turn it up or down. Of course, put a little bit of tension back on. And to be honest, if you have to adjust it just a tiny bit, just to tweak it, you don't have to put off all the string tension. A little tension is fine, especially when you're going a little bit more down. If you wanna go up and it's more than a little tweak, just loosen it a little bit so it gives some slack on all the threads and stuff and it maintains your durability of your parts. Nice. So now the, the string height of the first and the sixth string are at the position I want them to be. Now I'm going to recheck the neck relief just to be sure that when I set up the rest it's nice. Now I can tweak two strings instead of seven. So still proper. So it could be if the action is too low for your taste and you really want to go a little bit up, then it's going to change a little bit in the tension. Now we set the strings, we're gonna set the radius on the bridge. That means for the 060, 70, 806, 807, it's gonna be like an 18.2 radius. So if you have a Stumac gauge, they will probably have them in 18, you're gonna be fine. We always use it as an understring because it gives the most precise radius because you take out the variation in string thickness. So we're laying flat the guitar. Mostly I'm gonna check if there's enough room between the strings and the pickup so we don't damage the pickup when putting the gauge underneath the strings. Still always take your time to do that. Don't be too brutal, just take some time and some care for your instrument. All right, now we have the radius under the strings. So what we first gonna do is check if you slightly pull it up, if especially the one and six make contact because those are your base pillars of your setup. If those two are not hitting and the rest is, just turn the rest up a little so you make sure that the first and the sixth string make contact. So as you can hear a little bit, so this is making contact. So I'm gonna especially get the fourth string up a little bit. All right, so as you can hear, the first one is giving a rattle, so it's hitting. 
it's free and the sixth one i feel it move when i hit it i feel the gauge moving so from this point now we're gonna lower the saddles till every str string makes the same little rattle so you know it makes contact try to be as precise as possible it just needs a little touch so you can hear it buzzing but you don't want to go too far and you can check yourself by when you've set one string you can check the previous string if it's still hitting the gauge because when you go too low when i over accentuate it you're going to do this with the gauge when you restring the guitar with fresh strings i think especially on the wound strings when you put some tension on them just gently push it a little bit over the saddle so you know that the core is hitting the saddle as well because sometimes if you especially with thicker strings you don't push them over they kind of go like straight over instead of on the intonation point so it could be that your intonation is way off you're going to rechange it and then after some playing you did some palm mutes you push down the string and then the intonation is totally off again. So it's always good to just give it a gentle press over the saddle so you can see that the string is really over the end point of the saddle where it gets straight at this point and then you should be good. So one and six are at their place. So now we're gonna lower the strings. So what I usually do, I go outer, inner, outer, inner and just work through the middle. I think that gives you the best results overall. So I think second string needs a little bit down. So yeah. For some people that play seven or eight strings or even a nine string, depending on the radius gauge you have, it probably isn't wide enough to accommodate all the strings at once. So make sure you do one to six. If you have those in a proper radius, you can always move the radius gauge one or two strings to the side and really try to follow the bow that you already made. And from that point, just easily lower the strings. I think for the, especially for the eight and nines, when you're going like 74, 80s, maybe 95s, it could be nice just to have them like a small, bit higher depending on playing style and what you're looking for but it gives just a little bit more room for the fixed strings to move around and you have a little less rattle against the frets when you hit a bit harder but it's all up to personal preferences i think that's the radius for now i'm gonna pull the strings up a little bit got the radius gauge out so when you're happy with your radius you can give it a small playthrough if you want to feel if it's, it feels correct for you. So we're mostly pretty happy with how it is. And then the next step would be locking down the front screws again to lock the saddles back in place. So one thing we always keep an eye out is that the saddles are nice in alignment of the strings. So it gives the best function and then you're pretty good radius wise. Why I say do the locking at the end, because maybe you're gonna change the setup from higher to lower. You're gonna play it and you think, ah, maybe it's too low or maybe it's too high. Then you don't need to unscrew everything again to adjust. You can just adjust till you're really finished and satisfied. As long as you got the strings on, the saddles won't fall out. So you will be good to go. All right, so putting down the locking screws checking saddles are nice aligned with the string a thing that sometimes happen i think it happens the most common with gold plated hardware or the chrome plated hardware is that sometimes the saddle gets a little bit stuck because the room is a little bit smaller in the pocket for the saddle so sometimes just press down the saddle so if you have the feeling it doesn't make contact to the bottom just push it down to be sure So as you see, this saddle leans a little bit more to the high strings. So I just push it a little bit on the string and then it's nice. Most of the times it will go in its own direction. So it straightens out when you turn the screws a little bit, but sometimes it needs a little bit of help. Well, 
All right, so these are the main things we do to set up neck relief, string height, radius, and then next step is gonna be intonation. So for intonation, what we're gonna do, first plug it in, of course. So gonna check the tuning again. Right, so if you want to be super precise, then f especially for the latest, f right before setting action, it's good to check neck bow and right before intonation. Still in proper precision. I also personally believe if you're gonna do like small steps on the neck, just a tiny tweak, it does, doesn't gonna do something with your intonation. But if you're gonna do a bit more, then it's always good to do it before intonation so all right i'm gonna do the first one and the seventh one and then the rest speaks for itself how to intonate the guitar so we tuned it checked the neck relief again so if you have a guitar with two or more pickups always go for the neck position and that's because the string moves more on top of the neck pickup versus the bridge pickup so it gives a little bit more overtones and a little bit more harmonics. So it makes your life a bit easier to get the intonation as precise as you want. So we're gonna play the harmonic on the 12th fret. So then we're gonna check our tuner. What I usually do is I hit the note, then wait a little bit because the attack of the string will let the pitch get up a little bit higher and then it's gonna drop down to the note it needs to be. So if you're too quick, you just keep intonating because one time you pick harder than the other time and you, you keep a little fluctuation. If you just give it a hit, let it rest for like, I think half a second, then it's on its pitch so you can get the best tuning. To intonate in the best way, you wanna try to push the string with the same amount of force as you're gonna use while playing because that in your case gives that the best result for your playing. So when we do the setup at Aristides, we always aim to press as light as we can towards the 12th fret. So a bit more to this end than to this end. So we're gonna hit the note. We check how it is on the tuner. It's a little bit on the high side. So I'm gonna move it backwards. So away from the neck. When we do that, we try to use baby steps because it depends a little bit on strings. So I think the unwounded strings, you can move a little bit more at a time, but I think especially the fixed strings are pretty sensitive to moving. So especially when you got like 74, 80s and up, it's the same when you tune those. If you just give a little bit of energy in it, it goes a long way. So small steps, because then you can restore it also really easy. So it needs to be a little bit further away from the neck. So I'm gonna get off the tension of the string. If I don't get the tension of the string, it's gonna go in that direction. And then you really need to start all over. To release the intonation screw, we need the two millimeter. So gently push the string aside a little bit. And then, so what I usually do when I'm doing the intonation, so there's always a little bit of tension in the string remaining. Just put my finger down so I can feel the saddle moving if I unscrew it and I can keep it in the right position. Just unscrew it a little bit, push it back a little bit, then re-tighten the screw. So they need to be tight, but don't hang on it like you want to get it through. So you feel when it's locked, it's secure. You should add some tension, like in this, I don't know if you can have it on film, Paul, but you can actually, when I apply a little tension, I rather see the wrench moving, twisting a little bit. So that's more than enough. It should be sufficient. So you wanna have it tight, like I think the right word is hand tight, and then you're, then you're good to go. Then we reach you in the string, So I think this one is in proper precision. For all those 
the other strings it works exactly the same so now we go to the lower string then I also show you the other methods you can use for intonating your strings this depends a little bit on playing style alright so we're gonna tune the string so a low string will move a little bit more 9 out of 10 when the string flutters too much you don't really get the right pitch it just keeps moving just just give it like a gentle stretch all over the strings and 9 out of 10 is gonna solve your problem one thing to point out sometimes with wounded strings they're not wound in the right way from the factory so with the same string guard you can get a totally different intonation point if it's too much off of what you normally see it would be a good idea just to switch out one or two strings just to check if those get a different intonation sometimes it happens and you can go around the whole guitar and it's just changing the string to get it in the normal position all right so from basic this is pretty good in the factory we try to preset up the guitars as good as we can so we have the least amount of work at them when we do the final setups so it's already in the good position what i'm now going to show is if you want a little bit of better intonation more on the high side of the fretboard then you can also check the intonation on the 19th fret so it gives you some better intonation mostly on the high part of the fretboard and it especially helps you out on the wounded strings versus the unwounded strings so we're going to use the harmonic on the 19th fret to give a bit of intonation on those low strings when you go heavy riffing beyond the 12th good thing to do when you're gonna play around with that just to see if that works for you don't press too hard because on the smaller positions it's easier to push the string in and pre-bend them a little bit so the tuning goes up so be aware of that that you don't be too harsh on pushing the strings because it's gonna get you tuning up and it's not gonna give you the result you're looking for. Alright, so this is a little bit too high, so we're gonna move it backwards away from the fretboard. So G2 in the string. Yes, I'm just gonna use this tool for you, the two millimeter. Once again, when I unscrew it, I hold the saddle with one hand so it doesn't go towards the fretboard. I just give it a little bit back so when you think you're in the right position I always also check the 12th fret if it gives a similar result should be a little bit different than the 19th fret because it's a different point but yeah sometimes it could be like this your sweet spot could be like right in the middle of both of them it's always good to check and from the point that you think you're close and you have all your other strings intonated just play some chunky riffs play some chords and listen to what is happening and if you're happy how the notes start to harmonize together if that is what you want if it's not to your liking you can always go back to intonating on the 12th you can maybe tweak it a little bit more so i think there's enough room to experiment and find out what's working for you as i told in the video if you press too hard on the smaller positions then it's easier to bend the string when you push a bit harder it goes up so I'm just gonna play the 12th fret so you're gonna see it's an f and now i'm gonna give i press it a little bit more and you see it goes up pretty much versus gentle push hard push so it's good for you guys to be aware that when you're intonating you want to try to to give the same pressure as you're going to use when you play so that could resolve in pressing a bit harder on the low strings when you're doing some heavy riffs and being a little more gentle when you're playing the high strings so keep it in mind and you get nice results all right guys so when we finished everything on the guitar like neck relief intonation string height radius so you're pretty much finished we're also going to check the height of the pickups we have a standard setting that we use that would give you a nice balanced sound between the bridge pickup and neck pickup so i show you how we do that at the factory and we dive into that later more specific so what we're going to do to adjust the height 
and see that it's at the correct height. We're gonna measure on top of the pole piece till the bottom of the string. We do it on the high string, on the high E, and in this case on the low seventh string, so it's always the both outer strings. So we're gonna press down on the 24th fret. If you have a Telecaster, you're gonna be on the 21st fret. So for the neck pickup, it should be 4 46th of an inch versus 5 4 46th of an inch on the bridge pickup. That gives you the best uh, balance results. We're gonna use the PH1 screwdriver for this. So usually half a rotation on the screw will give you approximately 1 46th of an inch moving down or up. We're gonna measure on top of the pole piece till the bottom of the string. So this is at 4 64th for the neck. So that's the correct height. And on the bridge it should be 5 64th. We always use the outer coils of the bridge. Um, so once again we put it on top of the pole piece check it and this measures five so it's perfect now we're going to do the same for the low string so push it down 24th fret just a gentle push that it touched the fret put your ruler on top of the pole piece measure to the bottom of the string so this is also one four so that's good and for the bridge top of the pole piece bottom string should be five that's also in this case so you should have a well-balanced sound versus bridge and neck. And now you're ready to rock the stage or the studio. All right, guys. So we're at the end of the first series of Timmy's Tech Tips. We covered everything for a basic setup and for you guys to help you out if you want to redo your setup or fine tune it a bit to your preferences. If you have any other questions that we didn't cover about the headless that you really want to know or maybe we missed something, feel free to leave a comment or give us a contact on the website and then we're going to try to get that covered in another video so we can help you guys out to get the best setup possible on your guitar so you can live long happily ever after.